Hi, my name's Baz Kinder and I'm from Wellington PPM. We're Microsoft Gold Partners specialising in project and portfolio management and we've also got a silver competency in learning. Today we'll be having a look at Microsoft Project Server 2010 and specifically we'll be focusing in on resource management. Before doing that, let's have a look at the evolution of Microsoft Project. So back in 1987, Microsoft released the desktop scheduling tool and at that time it was primarily geared towards individual project managers. As organizations have grown in maturity, as more and more people have wanted visibility of what's happening on project, and as the need to collaborate on projects has come about, Microsoft released Project Server. So we're currently on version 2010, which is the fifth release. So it's quite a mature solution. It's not just me saying that. These are all server findings of Gartner. In this year's MarketScope 2011 report, where they look at all of the leading players in the project and portfolio management space, they gave Microsoft Project Server 2010 a strong positive rating. Now, the thing that sets Microsoft apart from some of the other vendors in the strong positive category are that Microsoft are the only suppliers that allow you to deploy their solution either in-house, using your own architecture, or to deploy it as software as a service. Whilst everyone else in the strong positive category only allows you to deploy their solution as software as a service, hence tying you in either to monthly contracts or annual contracts. Looking at some of the quotes from Gartner, they also say that Project Server 2010 is a landmark release for Microsoft because it's in this release in which they include SharePoint 2010 as a foundation for things such as workflow, document management and collaboration. They also comment on the fact that Microsoft's licensing is very cost competitive. Let's have a look at the overview of Microsoft Project 2010 and have a look at the components that make up the solution set. So centrally you have Microsoft Project Server 2010. Now that's really a central repository for project related information, whether that's your project schedules, your enterprise resource pool, templates, anything project related, it's held within Project Server. On a day to day basis to interact, most users will use what is known as Project Web App, shortened down to PWA. Depending on what group you belong to, whether you're an executive, project manager, or resource manager, you all go to exactly the same URL. However, thanks to security trimming, you can control not only what people see, but also what people can do within PWA. So you might determine that the only group allowed to see the resource center, for example, are the resource managers. Now, whilst within PWA, project managers can do some light project scheduling, they would probably prefer to use Project Professional 2010 as that offers more functionality. Now, there is a breakdown of functionality available on the web. If you would like it, then please contact us at Wellington PPM and uh, we can send you that document. Last but not least, you can also integrate Project Server 2010 with other Microsoft solutions, as well as other line of business systems. Drilling down further into Project Server 2010, you can see that there are two components that make up the actual solution itself. Before I go into more detail about the actual components, let me just make it clear that not every organization will deploy, first of all, both components, or secondly, every piece of functionality that's available within Project Server. It's always configured and scaled to match the environment. Let's have a look now at a very high level at the two components. The first one is concerned with top-down portfolio management. This is where projects are proposed, it's where business cases can be built, and it's where projects can then ultimately be prioritized and either approved or rejected based upon whether or not they align to corporate strategy and what kind of return on investment they will provide. The second component, which is something that we are focusing on today, is concerned with bottom-up project management or project execution. It's where you would do your day-to-day -day project management activities of project scheduling, resource management, reporting, and so on. Here we see the findings of a survey that was published by the Center for Business Practices. So they went out and spoke to a range of organizations ranging from SMEs right the way to large multinationals to identify from them what their biggest pain points were in relation to project management. Quite a few pain points were identified, but the pain point that we would like to discuss today is allocating resources. So from our own experience, not many organizations typically know how many resources they have, what the resources are working on, or how many resources they will have available tomorrow. So answering questions such as, what would happen if we took on another three projects next month, simply can't be answered with ease. Moving on, let's have a look at resource management with Microsoft Project Server 2010. So the Enterprise Resource Pool in Project Server 2010 allows you to contain centrally all the enterprise resources needed to perform project work in your organization. Resources in very simple terms can be people, equipment, and materials. Today our focus is very much on people and within Project Server, people resources can also be categorized as generic resources, human resources, and team resources. 
A generic resource is a skills-based placeholder resource, such as a .NET developer, tester, or an analyst. So these general resources allow you to specify the skills that you will need for a very specific task within your project before you know who's actually available to work on that task. And when I move on for demo shortly, you will see how we can use generic resources and how you can substitute generic resources with named resources based on their availability and how closely they align to the attributes within the generic resource. And generally within Project Server 2010, you gain a lot of visibility on your resources. You can track resource demand versus capacity. You've got access to the centralized resource center, and you've got access to a brand new feature called the Team Planner in Project Professional 2010, which allows you to click and drag task assignments to various resources. And uh, shortly we'll be seeing the Team Builder in action where we will be substituting generic resources with named resources. Moving on then to the live demonstration. Just before I jump into it, let me show you what I'll be running through. So in simple terms, I'll be creating a brand new project using an enterprise project type template, and I'll be assigning resources. Now the project template that I use will be preloaded with generic resources. I'll use the build team function to check resource availability and replace the generic resources that have been put into the template. I'll also show you how you can increase visibility of projects using Project Server 2010. And last but not least, we'll show you some resource management related dashboards. And here we are now in the demo environment. I've already opened up an Internet Explorer page with the PWA homepage, which is what we see in front of us now. So Project Web App, otherwise known as PWA, presents you with a quick access tool menu bar here. Now I'm currently logged in as a administrator, so every single option available is presented to me. I can see my work, projects, resources, reports, and settings. Had I been logged in as, let's say, a team member, the only option available to me might be my work. In the central area of the screen, we see a reminder section. It informs me that I've got new tasks assigned to me. If there's any outstanding timesheets, approvals, status reports, or issues or risks that have been assigned to me to look after. Being based on SharePoint, you can also modify this page, and you can add or remove web parts. Just before I go into the resource center and give you a tour of that environment, let me just quickly click into Project Center. This is where you get visibility of all the projects within your organization. So here I see a list of all of the projects, and against it, I see various rank statuses. Now, this can all be configured to match your environment, to match whatever metrics your organization currently monitors. You can have multiple views. I'm currently looking at the RAG status. You can have key milestone views. Another popular view that many clients have is something along the lines of a customer view or program view. If I roll over any of the KPIs, there's a story behind the smiley face or the unhappy face. It tells you if something's behind schedule or over schedule or ahead of schedule. Now again, all of these are based on your own formulas. Going now to the resource center, you will see a list of all the resources in your organization. At the moment, we're viewing all resources by role. You could view, quite simply, all of your resources, not in any particular order, apart from alphabetical. And this is where you could also come to check resource assignment, resource availability, and so on. For now, what we want to do is get a project center, now I stated earlier that I would use a template to start a brand new project and to do that all I would do is go to new, select the appropriate template. However, I've already done that. So we've got a project that I created earlier called resource management demo. If I click into it, you will see that as part of a template, there are various phases, sub phases and tasks. I could now start to build a team by going to project, build team. However, I don't want to do that using Project Web App. So if I close out, I will now go into Project Professional 2010. To do that, I simply click on this icon here. So now we have a project opened up in Microsoft Project Professional 2010. Here I see a list of all of my tasks, duration, start and finish dates, and importantly, on the resource names, we see a list of generic resources. So to assemble the project team, we need a project manager. To do the design work, we need a designer. To do the integration work, we need a developer. So what we need to do at this stage is find named resources with availability on the appropriate dates to do the work. In order to do that, I go to resource, add resources, build team from enterprise. So this dialog box appears, and what we have on the right-hand side is a list of all the generic resources that have been assigned to the project, and we see how much effort is required from each one of them. So if I leave it selected as Analyst, I move over to this list over here on the left-hand side, which is a list of all of my enterprise resources. Now, in order to find an Analyst, I don't have to go through the list. I don't have to double-click on all the names. All I have to do is click Match. 
And here I am presented with a list of all the people within the organization that are analysts. So if I click on Vince West and I click on to his filter option up here, I see that Vince has the value of analyst against his name. Now that's only a single attribute, you can have multiple attributes. So you might want to factor in certifications, location, anything at all. I just minimize that. Another thing that's not being displayed at the moment is availability. In order to show that, I select show resource availability. I'm going to, in this instance, use the project start and finish date. In the real world, you might want to drill down to exactly when the work needs to take place, and that way you would get more appropriate results. But for now, I will use that very high level date range. If I hit apply, I can see how much availability each one of these resources has. In order to replace the generic resource with the named resource, I simply hit replace. And now we have Vince in the list and the analyst generic resource has vanished. If I click OK, you can see that Vince's name now appears within the resource names column. Another way in which you can allocate resource is by going to the team view, which is brand new to Microsoft Project Server 2010. So here we have on the left hand side a list of all the resources that we've got assigned to the project. And then we have a calendar view. And if I roll over any one of these tasks, I can get more information on them. But the great thing about this particular feature is that I can actually click and drag tasks to wherever I want. And if you notice, everything juggled around when I did that, that's because it still takes into account dependencies. So let's say Vince is now off sick, I would click and drag into somebody else's diary. And when I file, save and then publish this, that work would be pushed out to have the work's been reassigned to. So that was a very quick look at Microsoft Project Professional 2010. We saw how easy it was to build a team and we had a very quick look at the team plan of view. If I now minimize that, here we are back in Project Server 2010. There are other views available. So if I go to Resource Center, I could choose to group resources by their role. And I might want to know what the availability is of all of the developers. To do that, select the appropriate resources, then hit resource availability. And what I'm presented with is a list of all the resources that I selected, along with their remaining availability. So there's only a bit of work assigned here, but a lot of the time people are just sitting on the bench. If I then scroll down, I can also get more of an insight into what people are actually working on, which projects are involved with, and how much time is being taken up on a weekly basis. So that's if I look at the uh, unit of weeks, I could change that to days, months, quarters, or even years. There are other views available as well. So what we see now is the assignment work by resource. And this view is essentially telling us that the only two people that are doing any work at this stage are Steve and Chris Tate. And the black line signifies what the capacity is for the selected resources. So we can see that we've got a lot of people sitting around not doing very much at all. But if I scroll down, I can actually see what people are working on at any given time. Which project, during which week, and how much work are they doing on those projects. So this is the resource dashboard. This is a part of the enhancements that we've made to Project Server 2010 with our PPM in a box deployment package. So here we see the actual and remaining versus baseline work for individual resources. We also see who the most worked resources are versus the most underworked. And thankfully, we don't have any underwork resources. So that was a very quick look at how you can utilize a combination of Microsoft Project Server 2010 and Microsoft Project Professional 2010 to give you more visibility on your resources and to provide you with tools to better effectively manage them. Moving back now to the presentation. Now, PPM in a box is our pre-built Microsoft Project Server 2010 deployment package. It's designed to get your organization up and running within 12 days at a fixed price. To get full details on the package itself, then please visit our website, which is wellingtonppm.co.uk. On the website, you can also request a callback and a member of our team will be in touch with you within 24 hours.